I think um, Kishon sets itself apart from, from most other facilities, particularly the dry dock, it's one of the largest in Western Europe. But I think the people on the West Coast and the Highlands Isles are fantastic. They're used to travelling, and at the end of the day, they've got businesses with innovation, and its remoteness can be its strength. We've got deep water, a number of, of deep water structures, and uh, obviously it's quite unique, it's sheltered water, which again, um, you know, that, that sets itself apart in the Highlands and Isles. Uh, I think the greatest opportunities for Kishorn looking to the next five or ten years are probably renewables and notably uh, floating offshore wind and uh, decommissioning. Floating offshore wind because it's an ideal place for the manufacture of caissons, floating concrete caissons and decommissioning because again the deep water access to, um, to Kishorn and again the dry dock make it ideal for the decommissioning of floating oil and, oil and gas structures. Um, High's investment for us at Kishon has been tremendous over the years. I think that um, it's enabled and it's oiled the wheels of us and given confidence to what we're doing and the support and, and the background of, of what we're doing. High's investment has been absolutely fundamental to the uh, to starting the site at Kishon. They first got involved with us about eight years ago and it's almost like seed corn investment. Um, they helped us with the initial investments in the, the master plan planning, a number of engineering surveys of the site. At the moment we've got a live inquiry for a number of floating concrete caissons for an offshore wind farm um, off the east coast of Scotland. Um, to be able to undertake that project we need to prove that the dry dock is workable and watertight and the works you see at the moment are basically emptying the dry dock, proving its watertightness if you like, as, as a precursor to construction of these concrete caissons commencing July this year.